Hello to my CA family and to everyone watching. My name is Ralph. Have you ever heard, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak? You may or may not know this, but that's actually a scripture from Mark chapter 14, which is the text for today's daily touch point. In Mark chapter 14, Jesus is about to be betrayed and handed over to the religious leaders to be crucified. And knowing what he was about to face, Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane with three of his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, to pray. Jesus fell down on his face and he prayed, Take this cup from me. He was talking about the cross. Yet not what I will, but what you will. After praying, verses 37 and 38 tell us that afterwards he went and looked for his disciples and he found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Then he said, the spirit is willing, Peter, but the flesh is weak. Jesus is being so gracious in saying the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In essence, he's saying, I know that in your heart, you want to do what's right, but I also know how much your flesh doesn't. So watch and pray. He's telling them and us how we can overcome the trials that we face in our lives. In Colossians 4.2, the Apostle Paul said something very similar. He said, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful with thanksgiving. Paul also says, watch and pray. Watch simply means that we need to be awake, we need to be alert, and we need to be discerning of what our enemy is up to in our marriages, our relationships, our families, our neighborhoods, and more. Recently in a sermon, uh, our senior pastor, Tom Hughes, said, the quickest way to lose a battle is to not believe that you are in one. I can tell you that when I face trials, too often I waste valuable time thinking that my problem is with people, it's with others. What about you? When you face those temptations, tests, or trials, do you stay bogged down in blame and anger towards others without realizing that you may be fighting the wrong fight and the wrong enemy? Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 12 tells us we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But Jesus' command to watch for our enemy's activity, it's only half of his command. Because once we discern the enemy's plans against us, Jesus says we must go on the offensive and pray. 2 Corinthians 10.4 tells us, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. That's prayer. It's a real weapon against a real enemy. And Peter, going back to the garden, he fell asleep instead of watching and praying. And he ended up denying Jesus three times. But learning from that experience, he, he later wrote these words in 1 Peter 5.8. He said, stay alert. He was thinking back, yep should have stayed alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour, looking for someone who isn't watching. Yes, Jesus knows our spirits are willing, but our flesh is weak. But he also knows that we can overcome like he overcame in the garden if we will simply open our eyes watch and pray. Let's do that now. Let's end our time together with a prayer. Father God, thank you that you offer help for us when the enemy is active in our lives. Open our eyes and help us to see where he's at work and then help us to pray 
that we might overcome. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been so good sharing God's word with you today. Join us again for another Daily Touchpoint.